Welcome back to video five, I think. Video five. It's like video five of this very weird series. Um, so previous video, we walked through the process of using the Azure CLI to create a service principle with role-based access control. So now that we've created our service principle, we're going to be leveraging it inside of the Azure Python SDK to access a resource. Now, because we're going to be using the Python SDK for Azure, we're going to have to make sure you know where it is and how you can install it. I will warn you, <laughs> there's a lot of packages. You don't need to install them all, but there's a few that are going to be pretty important. So the first thing is, um, if you go into the presentation, obviously, I do have install the required Python packages. And I have a couple links here. One is to the SDK libraries. So if we go here, this is basically a list of all the individual uh, packages that are related to Azure. Now, technically speaking, you could install all of the packages at once. I wouldn't recommend it if you don't need to, just because it's a very a large installation and there's a tremendous number of packages that would have to be installed at the same time. However, there are a couple that are what we would call essential or core in a sense. So for example, there is the Azure core one. Um, there's going to be some that is common. There's the identity package. Um, one that I use a lot is the key vault one. There's functions. There's basically just different packages for different services that are offered on Microsoft Azure. This is one of the selling points about Microsoft Azure is that you can use basically whatever language you want. So you can use C++, you can use Python, JavaScript, Java, .NET, any of them to leverage Microsoft Azure resources. You can even use the REST API as well. I will warn you, sometimes <clears throat> you have to keep in mind that you can't do every single operation you possibly want using the Azure SDK, but you can man manage your resources a lot of the times. Um, but you might not necessarily be able to, say, upload values to a SQL database, for example. That might be something that you can't necessarily do using the Azure SDK, but you can use other libraries in order to do it. So don't feel like you're necessarily stuck and you're out of options. But the important thing about this page is this is where you can find all the packages, all the versions, any ones you want, even the beta ones. They're all here for you to use if you want to use them. Um, if you click into any of them, so if you click the individual ones, you can go to the actual PyPy location of it and you can see what the command needs to be in order to install it, like we've seen in many other videos. There's also documentation. So if you actually click the documentation link, Microsoft documentation, you can see each of the libraries. It's often very similar to what you would see on the GitHub documentation, but you can see right here, there's a ton of packages. Um, and if you go into them, you can see, okay, I'm gonna go to Azure Identity, and then I'm gonna go into the Identity Package, and then I'm gonna go into the a CLI credentials class, and then I can see all the methods to it. So you can go down a rabbit hole if you're not careful. You just got to be aware there's a lot to it, and there's a lot that you can potentially go into. So just be aware of that. There are a lot of different uh, components to each library sometimes. Additionally, you can go into the GitHub documentation. So this is going to look awful familiar. It's going to look basically what you would see on Microsoft uh, documentation page as well, but you can see examples and stuff like that. So very similar to what you've seen before. And then finally, if you want to go to the actual source code itself, you can also do that as well. So you can see here, this is the actual source code. This actually sometimes <laughs> is a little bit more helpful than the documentation. Um, a lot of the documentation doesn't have examples where usually the GitHub source code, if you go into the testing folders, these will actually have examples for you. So I tend to find the GitHub repo more resourceful because there's actual examples. So <clears throat> that's the 
Azure SDK libraries. This one is the Azure SDK repo. This is literally where we were just at, but this is at the top level page. Now, this is the funny thing about the Azure SDK. So if you go into the actual SDK folder, you then have all the packages. So say I want to go into the data factories. Okay, so then I got to go in the Azure management data factory. And then there's Azure, and there's management, and there's data factory, and there's operations, and then I have all the operations. <laughs> so you can see how deep some of these folders can go. Now, again, they're very helpful. It's very easy to just explore it, see what you can do. A lot of this is auto-generated code, so it's not the cleanest, but it's there if you need it. And then additionally, like I said, most of the time, the testing folder is where I tend to find it's most helpful. So they will give you examples and stuff like that. Again, not heavily documented, but you at least get some type of code to work off of. And finally, there is the Azure for Python developers. So this is, again, helpful if you want to use the Azure SDK, but specifically for Python, they will talk about common scenarios. They'll actually walk through some examples of deploying certain resources and then authenticating. What does that look like? Installing packages, the API reference, examples, samples, examples and samples, <laughs> tools. There's a lot here. I mean, there's just a lot here. I, I wish I could say it was simple, but it's not. And so really, I always look at it as when I need to do something, I'm probably going to read the documentation first, see what's out there. And then whatever the documentation tells me to do, I'll probably be do, doing that. But very important that you know where this is, what information is here, because otherwise using the Azure SDK in Python can be a little bit challenging. Okay, so now that we at least have high level overview of the resources out there and looking at what packages we can install. We're going to do one thing first before we actually install a particular package, and that is setting up our environment so that way we can leverage our particular code, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the information from our previous video when we created our service principle, and we're going to take that information and store it in some environment variables. This is important because when it comes to authentication, there is something called the default Azure directory. I think that's what they call it, or default Azure credentials. I, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but basically that is going to be our mechanism for our authenticating ourselves and then making sure that we're authorized to use those particular resources. And so this is, again, the, the suggested way by Microsoft to access your resources. So I would highly recommend you follow what Microsoft is telling you to do. So that way your life will be easier. Alrighty. So previous video, we created our service principle and it spit out this little JSON file that has all this wonderful information. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these variables as environment variables on our system. Now, if you want a little sample for you, at least for window users, I already have a command file that is ready for you to fill out. So uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to set environment variables and that they persist over sessions. So if you do this, this will basically delete itself after the session is done. If you want it to persist over session, so basically if you want to run it once and not have to run it again, you can do set X. It's very, very, very important that they look exactly like you're seeing here. If they do not, they will not work. I'm going to say that again. They need to look exactly as they look here, spelled exactly the same, all uppercase with the underscores in the exact place that they need to be. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the information here in our JSON file, and we're going to put it in our command. Why is my copy paste not working? Ah, ay, ay, ay. Okay, so first thing, we're gonna put our client ID here. There we go. We're gonna take our client secret, put this here. 
We're gonna take our subscription ID and we're gonna put that here. And then finally, we're going to take our tenant ID and we're gonna put that here. That time it worked, I don't know why. Interesting. Okay, and then once you've done this, you can run this command file. I would run it as an administrator. So what I do is I just go in here from the file explorer, open, or sorry, reveal in file explorer. And then normally what I'll do is I'll do a command prompt and then I'll say run as administrator, put yes. And then I copy my folder and then I'll do change directory double quotes, especially if they have spaces like I do, so I can change the location. And then from here, I just run the set environment, sorry, set environment command. Now I want to demonstrate something to everybody. Sorry, I had to skip ahead a little bit because I realized that my environment variables were not deleted. So everyone could see them. All right, so what I was gonna say is from here, you have your command, you know, you have your command file. We've changed directories using our command prompt. I wanted to show you right now that currently inside of our environment variables, there's nothing here, okay? So there's just, there's nothing there, which is great. So nothing should be there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this command. Great. So this is great. So it looks like everything, uh, the value was saved. That's awesome. So if I go back into my environment variables, I can now see that they're here. This is great. Here's the problem. If you were to try to run code right now, Visual Studio Code has not reflected those changes. So it's really important that you close down Visual Studio Code entirely. So what I will do is I literally close out every single instance of VS Code to make sure that those changes are reflected. It's very important because if you don't do that and then you try to run your code right after, you're gonna run into problems because it's gonna say like, oh, I can't authenticate myself. I can't authenticate myself. So very important that you make sure you do that. And it's very important that you make sure that you allow yourself to make sure those changes are reflected. So once you've done that, then you can open up VS Code. And then what I'll do, <clears throat> is I think I put it in this one. We'll go in the Azure management one, make our lives easier. Okay. Perfect, great. Okay, so a couple things I like to do before I start doing anything else and before I start installing the packages and is I wanna make sure that they are truly in my environment variables because if I can see it here, I know that Azure, the Azure SDK can see it. So I'm gonna first run this particular file to validate that they are in there. So this is great. It's very important that it, the operating system package can see it because if it can see it, then Azure can see it because Azure uses this one. Then from here, we can start installing the packages necessary in order to use resources. Now, in our particular instance, we're gonna be using something called the Key Vault resource. This is a nice, easy way to store sensitive information in a secure method. Now, we're gonna walk through what this process looks like. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna fail right off the bat, ideally, if I remember correctly. And once it does, we're gonna explain why that's happening and the steps that you have to take, because for some resources, you do have to walk through this process. So. If you wanna save yourself a headache and just install, I would say the, the, the information that you need at a basic level, you don't need this one, you don't need this one, you don't need this one. I would say these are the ones at a very simple level, I would say install, yeah. So if you wanna use this requirements.txt file, I'll make sure to have it on the repo. If you wanna install the other ones, you can. Um, additionally, if you go into the, God, where did I put it? This one, the SQL data project, there is another requirement.txt file here as well. This has more packages in it. So this has like the PyODBC and this one. 
but really you just want some of these core ones so that way you can access most resources. And then once you need to get the specific resource, then I would just say install it as such. So if you want to install it, it would be pip install hyphen r require requirements.txt. <clears throat> Obviously I've installed them before, so it's a lot quicker. Yours can take a little bit longer. And then once you've done that, we're gonna then talk about credentials. <laughs> so this is where things get fun. Ah, default Azure credentials, that's what it is, that's what it is. So when it comes to accessing our resources, we have to authenticate ourselves and then we have to make sure that we're authorized to use those resources. One uh, particular method that we can use is the default Azure credential. So this is um, a, a basically an object from the Azure.identity package. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to run through different authentication processes. So it's going to try to authenticate you using multiple different types, I mean, multiple different ways. There's many different ways you can authenticate yourself. You can use the CLI, you can use Visual Studio Code, you can use um, environment variables, so on and so on. In fact, if you want a deep, detailed explanation of what that looks like, I have an example for you. So if I go here to my SQL data project and I go to authentication, <clears throat> And then if you go to samples, auth, use, auth, Azure default. So this runs through a very simple example, but what I really want you to keep in mind is these optional arguments. So you don't have to specify any of these, but this gives you some idea of the different ways that it's gonna try to authenticate you. And it does it in the order in which you, it appears. <clears throat> so the first way, well, actually, no, this one's first, is the environment credentials. So it will try to authenticate you using the environment variables that we specified. That's why they encourage you to set up your environment using those variables, because if you do that, this is the first way it's going to do it, and it's the easiest. So it's going to take those variables, it's going to run through the authentication process, and then authorize you when you need to use that resource. There's also the CLI credentials. So if you've logged in using the Azure CLI, it can use those ones. Um, there's the managed identity credentials. So this is part of another service that Microsoft Azure offers. There's the Vi Visual Studio Code credentials. So if you logged into Azure using Visual Studio Code, you can use this. This one tends to cause issues, especially if you have multiple accounts. From what I'm understanding is this one's actually for those of us who have like a business subscription. So that tends to work. But if you have multiple accounts, something happens and it really doesn't like this and it failed for me all the time. So I can't do this method on my system. There's the shared token cache credentials and then interactive browsers. Don't worry about these ones. Try to either do this one or this one. You can try this one. I'm not gonna guarantee it's gonna work. Now, the only reason I specify these arguments is if you want to exclude, if you want to not try that method, then you would specify this particular argument and you would set it equal to false, or sorry, to true. So for example, what if I don't want to use uh, the CLI credentials? What would I do then? Well, that's fine. Just say credentials and then true. I do not want to use my CLI credentials. Do not try to authenticate me using my CLI credentials. So that's only if I do not want to use that particular protocol. Otherwise, just leave it exactly the way it is. So let's walk through an example using our key vault. But we're gonna do that in the next video because at this point, I think I've confused enough people. So in our next video, we're gonna kind of finish up everything. We're gonna walk through very briefly, what does it look like? And what are some things that can go wrong? And then when they do go wrong, how do we fix them? So at this point, if you have any final questions, please put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in video number six.